so a very good morning to one and all uh, um, this is sayed tazib rahman from nerdy scientist i welcome you all for the new um, lecture video on uh, the latest very very uh, trending uh, topic of styrene and its dangerous impacts on human health so why styrene is because of the latest styrene gas leak from the industries Uh, which is actually located in Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh, which actually killed uh, more than ten people and uh, around thousand people are in the critical state, and uh, there's a lot of chaos happening during this COVID-19 lockdown. So industries didn't actually take proper precautions because of that. It actually led to uh, this kind of leak. So styrene, uh, this impact of to towards human health is actually important to. make others understand that you know uh, you know it is it's actually impacting people uh, very much so it's actually important for us as science students to understand what are the actual impacts of styrene uh, uh, the dangerous impacts of styrene to on the human health so we wanted to actually make you understand this importance so that it doesn't happen again and uh, people have to pay, take proper precautions Uh, so that you know they don't get affected to this kind of gas leaks so yeah styrene uh, what are the hazards generally related to styrene so styrene is actually a primarily used in production of polystyrene plastics and resins and uh, for a very short time exposure if there is an ex- short time exposure you call it an acute exposure so if there is any acute exposure of styrene in human it results in mucus membrane and eye irritation and gastrointestinal effects if it is a chronic long term exposure if it's chronic long term exposure uh, to styrene in humans results in the mucus membrane and eye irritation and gastrointestinal effects these all will be included for the chronic long term effects effects also but the majorly the central nervous system gets affected so much such as uh, leading to headache fatigue weakness depression the csn dysfunction hearing loss hearing impairment peripheral neuropathy and all these kind of causes are actually connected to the styrene if it actually inhaled by uh, the public the general public so human studies are inconclusive at present uh, according to the various studies which actually research, researchers actually have done on styrene they are not not they are not in a com- proper conclusion has not been taken up at present so the, the they actually inconclusive on the reproductive and developmental effects of styrene so several studies did not report an increase in developmental effects in women who worked in plastics industries while an increased frequency of spontaneous abortions and decreased frequency of births were reported in another study so we don't have a proper conclusion on how the styrene is affecting pregnant women and how they are getting affected but according to few surveys according to few surveys uh, it is definitely impacting the pregnant women and it is leading to uh, abrupt uh, abortions of children so of the infants who are actually present in the fetus of the mother who are actually the workers in this plastic industries plastic manufacturing industries so there are several epidemiological studies which are suggesting that there may be an association between styrene exposure and an increased risk of leukemia and lymphoma however the evidence is inconclusive due to the confounding factors epa which actually is a association uh, which actually rates and classifies various dangerous chemicals and gases has actually not given a formal carcinogen classification to styrene we'll come back to that it's not a carcinogen according to epa but it is actually having a lot of impactful effects on cancer patients and it may also lead to cancer we'll go we'll go into that later so what are the general uses of styrene why it is why it is actually being very much prevalent so styrene is used predominantly in the production of polystyrene plastics and resins styrene is also used as an intermediate in the synthesis of materials used for ion exchange resins to produce copolymers so these are the few uses very very important uses very very prevalent uses because we actually use plastics everywhere so wherever you find a plastic industry it means that styrene is being used in that kind of manufacturing so 
all the polymers are related to styrene and styrene is actually very much important in manufacture of all these kind of you know uh, plastic materials plastic containers which are being used you know in a very uh, large scale so this, this the manufacture of plastics as they are actually proportional to the rate of usage of uh, styrene it's very much important that there is lot of chances that it may lead to a leak in industry if they are not careful so note that point what are the sources and exposure how it gets exposed to the environment so the indoor air is the principal route of styrene exposure for the general population for the normal public indoor air is definitely a very very important and a principal route for the exposure of styrene to the normal general public so average indoor air levels of styrene in the range of 1 to 9 micrograms per meter cube attributable to emissions from building materials consumer products and tobacco smoke so these are all three kind of different sources through which you know the styrene gets affected and gets you uh, know it actually impacts uh, general public so the ambient air in urban locations contains styrene at average concentrations of 0.29 to 3.8 micrograms per meter cube while styrene in rural and suburban air has been measured at 0.28 to 0.34 micrograms per meter cube so it it does actually gives you some very very crucial points that you know styrene is present in the environment in a very very minimal concentration but if it gets increased due to the leak then it causes the massive effect what you actually have seen yesterday uh, i mean uh, in in visakhapatnam due to the leak so the concentration if actually it gets increased to another level uh, definitely it causes lot of lot of health impacts initially you may not feel that that kind of dangerous impacts but uh, as we go on as uh, as they actually go to the later stages they actually uh, get affected in a very different way you can't actually expect so occupational exposure is also there which actually we have to to styrene which occurs in the reinforced plastics industry and polystyrene factories so these are very very common uh, places where you can where you, the people who are actually uh, you know working in the industries plastic industries most importantly get exposed to styrene and they are actually are prone to get a, getting exposed to styrene so it's very important that they take proper uh, measures and the industry management who's actually working on uh, these kind of dangerous gases and dangerous chemicals it's important that they actually um, take control and maintain the industry uh, in a safe way so that the workers who are working don't get affected because it's a main site and people may get completely affected to exposure so the physical properties very very important what are these what are the physical properties of this liquid so styrene is a very colorless liquid that has sweet smell very very sweet sweet smell the order threshold for styrene is around th- around 0.32 parts per million uh, the chemical formula for styrene is c8h8 and the molecular weight is 104 grams per molecule so uh, the vapor pressure for styrene is around 5 mm uh, hg and at 20 degrees centigrade um, the proper vapor pressure concentration you know, the level is 5 mm and it's uh, partition coefficient oil uh, no often all water partition coefficient is around 2.95 so just is a few facts about styrene what are the physical properties if someone asks you can actually be able to answer by saying all these kind of properties so it's very much important that you all understand about styrene and its physical properties now talking about the personal exposure laboratory tests can determine styrene by measuring the breakdown products in the urine so so just imagine how can you actually detect whether you know the styrene has getting into the body you know, it has been inhaled into the into your body uh, because it's a highly volatile compound so through the urine test you can actually determine that this the styrene is actually present in your body the urine tests are very popularly you know commonly conducted if if there is any exposure of styrene to the workers of uh, industries or the people who got exposed recently in visakhapatnam and how much level they got expect you uh, know affected can be determined using the urine tests so it's very much important that doctors who are actually working on the patients who are suffering with this exposure due to the leak actually have to go forward and do these urine tests 
so that they can actually estimate what kind of uh, exposure led to the death of the patient uh, or the uh, or the or the harmful effects caused in the patient so it's very much important that to do these urine tests and uh, detect what is the concentration level of styrene which is detected in the body which actually caused this kind of problem uh, due to the exposure so however these tests only are useful for detecting very recent exposures so recently if it has happened you can only detect them if it is past one two days it's difficult to actually detect uh, in the body any any it could be any exposure not only styrene so it's important that uh, people need to act immediately you know doctors need to act immediately the patient have to come to the doctor immediately so so that you know there is proper anal uh, analyzing of the situation and uh, proper treatment given to the patient is very much important for a doctor and the patient to be in connection so if it is not there that that correlation is not there it actually leads to problems so personal exposure to a certain level may cause a lot of problem and detection ways are these and i hope people follow it now the health hazards what are the acute effects what are the chronic effects will talk about in a deeper way so acute exposure as i said it results in respiratory effects such as mucous membrane irritation eye irritation git effects and tests involving acute exposure of rats and mice have shown styrene to have low to moderate toxicity by inhalation and oral exposure so the accumulation of toxins in your body though it is an acute uh, you know cause the acute exposure is there due to the accumulation of toxins in your body you may feel a, uh, you know you feel like you know you cannot breathe the, you cannot breathe and you just see the situation that's why people are falling falling down from in the roads you could see the videos very much heartbreaking to see all those videos so that's how things happen you know when there is accumulation of toxins in your body just in a second things gets reversed and that's that's how impactful the styrene exposure could be when it comes to chronic exposure fortunately chronic exposure didn't happen that in that rate uh, in the in the in the latest leak which happened in visakhapatnam we were very much fortunate that it didn't happen if it has happened then in humans it results in effects on the cns with symptoms such as headache fatigue weakness depression cns dysfunction cns dysfunction which actually you know the reaction time memory you know the speed and accuracy intellectual function everything goes down it completely dis- becomes unfunctional dysfunctional it becomes inactive then nothing can work you're not understanding what is happening around you that's what that's what happened so then in hearing loss peripheral neuropathy minor effects on some kidney um, enzyme functions and on the blood so there's a lot of lot of uh, serious causes serious effects which actually are um, you know being caused by the exposure the chronic exposure of um, styrene so animal studies in, in an experiment have reported that the effects on the cns liver kidney eye and nasal irritation from inhalation exposure to styrene so liver blood kidney and stomach effects have been observed in animals following chronic oral exposure so the chronic oral exposure has led to various kind of organ dysfunctionalization for example it is liver it could be kidney it could be stomach everything are actually getting dysfunctional you know things are not working as as it needs to be so it actually is leading to a lot of effects lot of problems and these are all non cancerous effects we are going to deal about the cancerous effects in the next slide so these are few acute and chronic effects which are actually being caused due to styrene leak so it's important that you people understand the importance of this um, uh, slide you note down this and Uh, please go th- further and do some research that how can we actually prevent this styrene effects in our body so reproductive and developmental effects what are as i said there are no proper uh, conclusions on these let's get it get into the deep discussion so human studies have not reported an increase in developmental effects in human who worked in the plastics industries where an increased frequency of spontaneous abortions and decreased frequency of births were reported in a study on the reproductive effects of styrene in humans in few reports scientific reports actually was this this thing were actually mentioned but they were not conclusive that they were not actually very much sure that you know it actually happened the data was not the data was not actually uh, enough to produce that kind of 
perfection so that you can actually strongly say that you know uh, reproductive effects are being caused by the exposure of styrene we need to look further we need to do a lot of surveys and research so that we can actually prove that fact so these studies as i said not conclusive and animal studies have not reported development or reproductive effects we need to work on few animal experiments so that we can actually prove these facts and uh, let the people understand uh, the actual dangerous effects which are being caused to the pregnant women due to the ex styrene exposure and coming to the lung tumors have also been observed in offspring of orally exposed mice so some experiments were carried out on the mice and lung tumors were actually observed due to the oral exposure uh, of mice and that's a very very important point to be noted so lung tumors as you know it's really really dangerous and if it is actually causing in humans then uh, yeah it's very very dangerous so the cancer risk coming to the cancer risk now after talking about the lung tumors several epidemiological studies suggest that there may be an association between styrene exposure and an increased risk of leukemia and lymphoma so however the evidence is inconclusive due to the multiple chemical exposures and in inadequate information on the levels and duration of exposure so though there are multiple exposures there are many many studies which actually are proven that it is actually styrene which is actually causing leukemia and lymphoma so animal cancer studies have produced variable results and provide limited evidence for carcinogenicity so the studies are actually very few on styrene now as the leak has happened recently in recent times we may get more research studies on this and uh, and we can actually analyze the reports of the patients we have to you know evaluate them and control their actual reports for you know the few coming months in future and you know uh, analyze their facts and let's see what comes up you know we don't know what is going to come up so it's important that the patients are need to be evaluated uh, for next few months so that we can actually decide what kind of effects uh, which are being which are going to be caused post this exposure post the treatment you have given for the harmful effects caused in the body in his or her body who are actually got affected so it's important that doctors analyze and evaluate their reports and keep it safe so that researchers can actually work on that things and come up with something new and uh, come up with some proof uh, it could actually act as a proof to actually prove something you know prove that you know these patients actually detected det uh, in future if they actually get detected with cancer or some kind of cancer we may actually link or connect it with these exposures actually happened in recent times so it's important that doctors need to go forward and analyze them for further uh, uh, you know further for further research so it will definitely help us to come into a conclusion and classify this dangerous styrene as a carcinogen so styrene oxide is already and shows positive carcinogenic results in oral exposure bioassays styrene oxide has been detected in workers exposed to styrene so this is a proof a valid proof the styrene oxide has been detected in the workers body who are actually exposed to siren in for 24 hours daily they actually work there a uh, few of them actually work for, for more than 15 hours in that factories and industries and they get exposed to that continuously for 15 hours just imagine how much harmful effects they are actually facing now it has now the leak has happened we got to know we don't know what kind of measure you know preventive measures protective measures they are taking inside for actually the workers who are working every day daily and uh, working on this styren gas you know styren chemical so they are living with styren chemical every day so it's important that we need to analyze the facts and uh, we have to check what kind of uh, preventive measures they are actually taking so iarc another association has actually classified this metabolite as group 2a probable probable human carcinogen and epa has did not classify it and the chemical currently is undergoing an epa integrated risk information system review to establish such a classification so it's under review right now so it's important that we actually go forward and get in touch with few researchers who are working on this styrene and give some uh, maybe they may give some ideas on these kind of effects and uh, it's important now that for the doctors who are working here on the exposure of styrene to actually work and analyze facts post the treatment it's very very important because because of that i'm repeating the same
term the same say statement because the statement is very much important it actually may help us to actually classify this dangerous chemical as a carcinogen it, it needs to be understood it needs to become a fact it needs to actually be proved that it's a carcinogen so that we actually prevent the futuristic problems which may which may be caused by styrene and some more dangerous chemicals in future so these are the few facts which i wanted to bring before you i thank you all for your patient listening uh, do follow and subscribe our channel do follow our insta page which actually is discussing about styrene leak and covid-19 infection please follow the rules and regulations uh, controlled and maintained by the government of india and yes do be healthy be safe be you no know, do eat good food do share knowledge it's very much important at this point of time that you do share knowledge with people so that they understand it better and please ignore the fake news coming up in various sites you know most important is the research studies that this vaccine is created somewhere this vaccine is created somewhere don't go for the deviations just see the official facts and just believe in them don't go for the fake news and yeah thank you for watching stay tuned there will be more interesting updates coming up so yeah thank you so much we'll see you bye